of a child. I don't know anything. I don't know any parent that wouldn't give their life for their child. And when they really emphasized, I always think about what sacrifice Jesus made, which is amazing, but what sacrifice the Father, what great sacrifice the Father had to give his only son, to say, I'm going to allow my son to die by the hand of my own creation. It's, kind of, it's crazy. And being 
beautiful. Um, man, what great love. What great love the Father has for us that he would do that. And so, with all of this in mind, the, the writer of Hebrews in chapter 3 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle or high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Two things right off the bat that I think are wonderful. One is, most of you don't know, most of you don't believe in who wrote the letter, who wrote Hebrews. But one thing that we can know is that whoever wrote this had to be in some type of leadership position, because they're writing a letter to folks to encourage them. And what I love here is that in the world, we like to put leaders high, Jesus, and he's applauding Moses, and he's applauding Jesus both for their faithfulness, 
Those covenants right here, what is being amplified is faithfulness to God. It's being faithful to God in the covenant with Judah, or the new covenant being faithful to God in the old covenant. However, it's going to, she's going to share the supremacy of the new covenant and of Jesus. That's not to say that, it's, that the new covenant is not better because the new covenant is better. When Jesus, we saw that in the resurrection last week, when Jesus came upon the day, it changed everything. Jesus reigns as king. He's given authority. He's received authority. He's given authority. It's beautiful. It says, yet, Jesus is more worthy. Sorry, he's worthy of more glory than Moses. Just as the builder of the house has more honor than the house itself, for every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. So the writer's going to make it clear that this new covenant and this Jesus Christ, that Moses was amazing in his faithfulness to God. See, the people he's writing to are mostly from Jewish descent. And so they're gonna, they, Moses was everything to them, pretty much. When you hear Moses, you would think even the Torah, the Genesis, Exodus, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, like Leviticus, what's this one there? But that's what you think of even when you hear the phrase, it's not just the person, but you think of God's covenant that he made. But he's going to be clear, because he's told him, he wants to be careful that they don't shrink back into the former way of doing things, into believing the laws that brings righteousness, the laws that brings justification. He, he wants to make sure they do not do that. And so when he honors the law and what God did through Moses, he wants to be clear that Jesus, Jesus is the builder. When we read in the first chapter, through Jesus, everything was created. And he gives us this, uh, this analogy of a builder. Does anyone know who that is? Yeah. Franklin Wright. Right. Probably the most, not probably, I would say the most famous American architect. Can someone name another American architect other than Franklin Wright? I don't think so, I don't either. <laughs> but, but I love, I put this image up here because I love, this is what the imagery that he's giving to show the difference between Jesus, God's new covenant with man, and, and, and Moses. And you see all these crazy, I love the way that passes, they're, they're so cool. He's saying, listen, these houses, the buildings, they may be beautiful and they are wonderful. And they are. We should celebrate the houses. We should celebrate that God created us and God created Moses. That God did all of these things. It's amazing. Who has the most honor, the building or the one who built the building? The one who built the building. The one who architect. The building didn't blow itself together. It may be amazing, but it didn't create itself. And this is a reminder for us to recognize that he's going to tell us that we're God's building here in a second. But we're not the architects. We're not the builders. God, Jesus, and thank God that we're not us. <laughs> thank you, God, that we're not. That Jesus is the architect, that he is the builder behind everything. Sometimes in our faith, we become so me-centered, we forget that. God, you didn't do this for me. God, I want you to, uh, I need you to do this for me. I'm not going to believe in you anymore. God, I can't believe this happened in my life. And because of that, I am, I'm just not going to spend that much time with you. Listen, you're not the architect. He is. He's the architect. He's the builder. We're his creation. I didn't create myself, did you know that? And that's a reminder that he is. And that is amazing. Because he's perfect. I don't, he, created, he creates beautiful things, as we sing the song. He creates beautiful things out of dust. And he's done that for us. So Jesus, the writer says, is, has way more honor than the house. And then verse 5 says, Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant. So he, there's no lock on, on Moses at all. This is what Moses was called to do. To testify to the things that would be spoken later. But his purpose was to serve and to serve what would happen later. That was Moses' purpose. And he was faithful in that. Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son. And just like we talked about before, that the Father sent his Son. Christ was the Son. And there is a beautiful line that says, what I just mentioned, and we are his house. If we hold firm the confidence 
us in the pride that belong to hope. So he says that, that we are God's, and I love what it says we are not you, or I. We together, we are God's house. The scriptures never talk about us being singular. It really doesn't really talk about the house of God and the building of God. It's always talking about us collectively, the body of believers. We're all together the house of God. If we hold firm the confidence and pride that belong to hope. Last week we read it opened up saying, Wherefore we must pay greater attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away from it. Three times here, and we're going to see again, that he is writing the center, and there's a, a warning to him, and we'll see why. He is worried that they are going to again drift away from the faith that they had, that they received in Jesus. Like the writers of the writers of Hebrews, and I see a lot over the New Testament, is that, that our faith isn't is 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 a lifelong journey to the end. That's our call. That's why people in the first century were killed and they died for the faith. So they would be faithful to the end. That's how Jesus was he was faithful to the end. Our call is to be constant and consistent with our faith and walk with God. And all of that, now listen, because this is what he says in verse 7. He says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harm your hearts as in rebellion, as on the day of testimony of the universe, when your ancestors put me to the test, though they had seen my works for 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways, as in my anger I swear they will not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. So, what the writer's going to do now is he's going to equate our journey with the Israelites' journey. What did God do for the Israelites back when they were in Egypt? He rescued them. He saved them. He delivered them. They were free, but yet they hadn't received the fullness of God's promise yet. The fullness of God's promise was to dwell in a house, a dwell in a house, to dwell in a land flowing with milk and honey, to dwell in this beautiful land. And yet, so what happened was there was escape from slavery, there was freedom, and yet there was a time in between the freedom and the promise that God had. The fullness of the promise that God had. And he's going to quote us similarly. In chapter 3, he will say, he rescued us, he saved us. Jesus has saved. He has brought the great, the great rescue to us. He has made a way for us to come to God. He has forgiven us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yet we don't see the fullness of the kingdom of God. Jesus will come back again. He will come back again and He will reach the heavens and the earth and He will reign as King. So there's this time in between right now things that God has called us to do. And yet we don't see the fullness of it. And the writer is telling us, he's giving the word, he's saying, don't be like the Israelites. What did the Israelites do? No, when they came out of Egypt, they were excited. Woohoo! Look at what God did for me! And then it got hard. <laughs> then it was really difficult. They didn't have the food that they wanted to have. They were out in the desert. And what did that cause them to do? Really, to, to not trust that God is going to run them the way He called them to go. God has said, just trust me. I am bringing you into a land flowing with wind and honey. I am bringing you to an amazing promise. And yet, they couldn't trust Him. When things got difficult, they walked away. And that was the, that's why I believe the writer uh, at the beginning of the chapter said, Moses and Jesus were faithful to God. See, Moses and Jesus had to go through tough things. Y'all, could you imagine being Moses? First of all, you have to go to Pharaoh. You have to go to a president and tell him, we got to let these people go. I don't know many of us can do that. We can do that with the power of God, right? Like Moses had. I'm telling you, that was tough. And then whenever the people finally come out, they almost immediately begin to complain against you. Like, come on, y'all. Haven't you seen what God can do? Haven't you seen what I've laid myself down for y'all? complain about me. God told Moses to do a tough job. I don't know if any of us would go, I want to be, <laughs> we initially might say, yeah, man, I want to be like Moses. But think about what he was called to do. That was tough. Think about what Jesus went through. Think about the people, think about Jesus, one of his most closest confidants, stabbing him in the back. Think about his failure who didn't believe in him for a while. A lot of them didn't believe. His hometown didn't believe. 
Pharisees constantly came against him, scribes constantly came against him, he could easily say, God, Father, what are you doing? I'm all in building this hard stuff all the time. This is so frustrating. It caused him to not be faithful to God. But it's clear that they, they were called with a heavenly calling. And it did get difficult and challenging at times. But they were faithful to God. And God is calling you and I to do the same. To receive our great rescue from Jesus. And to remain faithful in everything that we do as we await God's promise. And, you know, I read this and this really hit home. Um, have you ever done like a million things for somebody that just can't get it right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, like, maybe you've given a ton of money to somebody to help them back on their feet. Maybe you've invited them into your own home. Maybe you have just literally pulled out everything and they just can't get it right. Does that even make you angry? God got angry. I think it's okay to be angry. I think it's okay to go, you know what? You know why he was angry? He said, God was angry at him. Because God knew who they were called to be. God knew that he had called them to promise. God knew that he had created them in his own image. God knew who they were. And he got angry that they decided to throw it all away. I'm glad that God got angry about that. Because that shows how passionate he was for the Israelites. It shows how much he loves them. And then he 
says in verse 15, as it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. And this, um, this saying right here occurs three times, or three times in this short chapter, he says, today. If you hear his heart, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And this was this has been on my mind literally all week. How do you, how do you remain faithful to God? How do you grow in a relationship with God? How do you grow in in, in, in our time of prayer? How do you grow in helping others? How do you grow in seeing Jesus and our brothers and sisters? How do you grow in these things? Today. We live today with Christ. We decide today to follow him. So many, I am so guilty of this. So many of us live in the past. We have past mistakes that we've made that just have derailed us from present. We constantly dwell on the screw-ups that we made. Or people have hurt us. And it changed, and how we, can't, we can't trust people now. We can't do these things now because of things that have happened in the past that have hurt us. We can't live today. We can't live present. We're having a hard time choosing God today. Not softening our heart to God today because of something someone's done, something we've done, something we've done God for. It's like today our hearts are, are hard because of something that has happened in the past. It doesn't mean the past is all bad. We're learning from the past here. But we're not living and growing in a place where we can't be present today because the past is directing our lives. Or there's the or there's the one. What's the word for it? I don't know. Or we live in the future. <laughs> the fear, you know. We live in this, in this fear of the future. Or we live in the, it's going to be okay when this happens. You ever, you ever get in that cycle where you think, man, my relationship with God is going to soar when I get a new job? My relationship with God, I'm going to be so faithful to God whenever, you know, um, I don't know, the, I, I, my hour of my overtime gets cut back. And then nothing changes. <laughs> And we keep thinking that our hearts are going to be so soft towards God, more and more and more and more, 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 later on in life when this happens, you know. Of course, you never say, I'm going to, this is not really about the Lord exactly, but I'm going to save money. But I wouldn't do it in the, you know, one day I'm going to have all this money saved up. But how do you, how do you, how does that happen? Does it happen by constantly thinking about tomorrow and being afraid this past side of tomorrow? It happens by today. I think one of the most beautiful things about Jesus is he was present. I, I, just, I just see that in the scriptures. He was so present in life. We, we, it, 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 we've become often so distracted, so in the past, so in the future. Can't wait to see what we're going to have after lunch. I'm going to read people going to be asked because that doesn't mean too much. But I want you, and this evening and tomorrow, that man, you ever just sit back and go, I am missing the moment of today. I ask myself that. I've got my kids, and I'm not going to have these kids here at my house for that long. You know? They're going to go, it's going to go so fast. Boom! Now he's going to be in middle school. Crazy. He's starting to smell, and, you know, he's having a little beer that I used to have. He had to teach him to put the odor on, you know? And it's just weird, you know? His brother said that he would use a customer at playing games. I'm like, gosh, oh no! Here we go! You know? He's not the sweet kid, innocent kid. So maybe he was never going to try to get in trouble. I wouldn't put past Jonah to do that. But I, but I recognize that the writer is calling us to choose God today. If we want to have a deeper, if we want to have a better prayer life, it doesn't happen when it happens today. It happens just choosing to spend time with the Lord today. If we want to have more intimacy with God, it happens today. When I'm sitting on my back porch and I choose to thank God and ask God to speak to me. If I want to hear God's voice, it means today. I choose him today. I really hope that we grab out of this. Because that's the secret to walking in faithfulness with God. That tomorrow's going to happen. We can be afraid that, oh man, uh, if I do X, Y, or Z, this is going to be tough for me in my life. And honestly, or, or we can move past and go, man, God, I'm just mad at you because you did this. I don't know uh, if I should follow you. Or we can move today and choose today to follow him. That's why it says, today, if you hear his voice. Today, if God's speaking to your heart, and he's speaking to all hearts, today, don't, don't, don't harden your heart like the Israelites did. It was tough for you 
like that. When you go into really tough challenges, it's going to happen. Remind yourself, tell yourself, the encouragement of Scripture says, today we choose God. Today we choose to have my heart soft towards God. Today, don't let my heart be hardened towards God. Don't let the things in my past or the things in my future direct me pursue me in faith to God. Today, guess what? To a degree, life is a little simpler when we do that. When you think of, oh, man, I don't know about the whole world to the end. Hey, just have faith today in Jesus. Don't give up on your faith. Trust Him. When tomorrow comes, don't worry about it, but when it comes, trust Him for the day. Trust Him. Walk with Him. Moses, all these, all these great men and women that we read about in the Bible, may we trust in God for the day. It was tough, but they, when they walked with them, that's a beautiful thing. Man, I think God wants us to live the moment. I just do. I think He wants us to live today. I think He created us for this earth. I mean, He, he did, I don't think. I know He created us for this earth. He created us to, to have to live over the earth, to go and be fruitful and multiply. He created us to, to live with one another, to live today, to live in His presence. And so it ends here by saying, now who are they who are they who who are they that were rebellious? Was it not all those who left Egypt under the leadership of Moses? But with whom was he only forty years? Was it not those who sinned and whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? If not to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were unable to enter because of their unbelief. So he ends here this chapter is going to end here by saying, look at the back of Israel. Tell them they never entered in God's rest. They were rescued. They were rescued out of Egypt. They never entered into the great promise and the rest of God. And why? Because of unbelief. That's it. That's it. Sin, cause it, whatever. We're called to believe. Today, believe. Today, believe in Christ Jesus. Today, believe in what He's done for you. Today, believe that He's given you everything to live a godly life, as the scriptures say. Today, believe that He has given you breath and trust Him and walk with Him. Today, work on your spiritual gifts, as, as Kyle said earlier. Right? Open up your heart. Today, spend time with Him. Today, pray. Today, read. Today, just love Him. Today, love your neighbor. So we want to see this great move of God and it starts with one person today. It starts with me deciding to go and say hi to my neighbor today. You know? It's so much simpler than we're like, we got this, we still oh, I want to do this, but it's today. It's what we do in this moment that matters. Let's live today. Let's live today. And this is saying in faith with God and walk with Him. And if we do that, we will, we will, we will walk faithfully to the end. I believe it if we choose every day to do it. So the last thing I'm going to do is remind us, I forget to do this sometimes, but as I pray here, and as we sing, I just ask that we would, you would think about what the scriptures are doing, and just ask yourself, ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want? I believe that he's already speaking to our hearts, actually. But just ask, what, do you want? what can I do with this word? And it may be as simple as, I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to recognize the presence of God. In everything that I do, and maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have an amazing prayer life with God, and it starts today. I'm gonna spend time with Him right now, this moment, not even later. I'm gonna spend time with Him right now. I'm gonna do today. I'm not gonna hold my heart as they did. I'm gonna hear His voice, and I'm gonna soften. I'm gonna love Him today. Lord, I thank you that you are God of present, that you are God of the past, that you are the God of the future, but that you are present with us right now, God, because you. Says that you are, I am. You are, you are the God of Abraham. You are the God of Isaac. You are the God of the living. You're not the God of the dead. You're the God that is here with us right now. And I worship you for it, God. I worship you for it, Father. I thank you for, for the men like Moses and Jesus who walked faithfully with you to encourage us that we can do the same thing. And I thank you that you word is just so simply puts today if we hear your voice we will harden our hearts God Lord I pray that that would penetrate us every day this week that we would learn how to live today and moment by moment with you God that we wouldn't live distracted that we wouldn't live in the past that we wouldn't live in the future
future, that we recognize that every day is a precious gift from you, God. That we wouldn't live in fear of the future, but that we would live presently with you, God. So that we can be a great light shining on this earth. There's so much darkness, but you have so much light, and your light overcomes the darkness, no doubt about it. Help us to be that light now. Right now, presently, and shine everywhere we go. In Jesus' name, amen.